This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. We're live here in Honolulu, and we're going over the water all the way to the Big Island to Nelha to speak to Greg Barber, the executive director of the Natural Energy Laboratory Hawaii Authority, commonly known as Nelha, and his chief uh, marketing officer, Laurence Sombardier, the French connection. And we're going to be talking about all the great things that uh, Greg and Laurence are doing over at Nelha, the crown jewel of uh, D-Bed. They're part, they're part of D-Bed, but you can explain all that. But from my own personal experience, because uh, Greg and Laurence are my landlords, because I have a project over there, great to work with, and they have great projects that I'm sure everybody is going to be really interested in seeing. So instead of me just talking here, I'm going to launch over to you, Greg, and uh, why don't you uh, tell us uh, about uh, Nelha and all the great things you're doing over there. Well, thank you, Mitch, and, uh, you know, a uh, long-time uh, viewer of your program, we uh, really appreciate it and uh, want to thank you so much for having us on. It's a real honor and a pleasure to be on your program. Uh, let me start by just giving uh, you and uh, maybe some of the viewers are not familiar with our energy lab and what we do. And uh, then we'll talk about some of the uh, new energy projects that we have to give you and your viewers a flavor for what we're doing. Perfect. Uh, First of all, Nelha is uh, over 40 years old, actually started after the first uh, oil shock in uh, 1974, got running uh, in uh, 1976, so I, I guess that makes us a little over 40 years old. And we have 900 acres on shore, and uh, if you look at slide one, uh, that I sent you. Uh, it shows our location here in Kona on the western side of the Big Island. Uh, it shows us uh, very close to the Kona International Airport. Uh, we actually surround it on the uh, western side and on the southern side. Um, we also have a research corridor offshore in the water of about 3,000 acres. And uh, we're here uh, for two main reasons. One is uh, the uh, Natural Energy Lab uh, was uh, had two main missions when it started 40 years ago. One was to do the pre-feasibility and uh, commercialization work for geothermal, and that work was done at our site uh, in Puna. And uh, we worked with uh, actually with the uh, University of Hawaii to do the original uh, feasibility studies, and once it was deemed to be commercially feasible, uh, we got out of that business, and uh, now Puna Geothermal Venture uh, does that operation. And the other natural energy that we're named after is ocean thermal energy conversion, and uh, that is the use of uh, warm seawater from the surface and the use of cold seawater, we have pipelines that go down uh, 3,000 feet. So the difference in the temperature is about, um, I think it's about 30 degrees Fahrenheit. Is that right, Lawrence? About 30 degrees Fahrenheit, 35. And so that warm water, if you run it through a heat exchanger with ammonia in the heat exchanger, the warm water will evaporate the ammonia and the cold water in another heat exchanger will condense the ammonia. And so it creates a loop of ammonia gas, and that is run through a turbine, and that generates power. Uh, it's very attractive because it's baseload power. Uh, it's carbon neutral, and it's, it's unlimited. It, it really uses the ocean surface uh, as the solar collectors. And... Uh, we have been uh, a, a test site for that technology for the past 40 years. One of the key companies working here is Makai Ocean Engineering. They have a large test tower here. And uh, it's still a ways off. 
it has some more work to do, um, but um, probably in the similar vein as hydrogen, you probably won't see the hydrogen economy uh, really strong uh, for probably another 10 to 20 years. And so OTEC is very similar to that. And it's a technology that needs a little bit more work before it can become commercial. So uh, that's why we were started. So we have this uh, a massive uh, array of deep sea water pipelines and surface sea water pipelines. Uh, we can pump uh, large volumes of water. We currently pump about 25,000 gallons a minute of both warm and cold water. We can pump probably four times that amount. And uh, so we have a ability to expand. Most of the businesses here use it for aquaculture. Uh, we're a large aquaculture operation test bed. Uh, one thing uh, it's important to notice note that we are a state agency, part of the state of Hawaii, uh, part of DBED, uh, Department of Business and Economic Development. Uh, but we are a, a self-sufficient agency. Uh, we generate all of our own revenue. Uh, we generate approximately um, $5 million a year. Wow. Uh, we've been self-sufficient for the past 10 years. Uh, we're very proud of that. So. Uh, we still do get money from the state for building of uh, uh, public goods like uh, roads and uh, buildings that uh, the community will use as well. But in terms of operation, uh, we're we're self-sufficient. Um, we have about uh, we generate our revenue from number one uh, the sale of seawater. Uh, we charge about twenty cents per thousand gallons, which is a very reasonable amount. Uh, you probably pay around four dollars a thousand gallons at home for your uh, drinking water. Um, we sell about two and a half million dollars worth of seawater a year. We run the seawater system on a break-even basis. That's a benefit for the clients in the park. Right. So um, whatever it costs us to pump that water is what we charge uh, for the water. Uh, we also generate revenue from the leasing of land and uh, buildings. We have uh, several buildings, office space that we lease, like like we lease to uh, to you, Mitch, uh, in our new incubator building. Uh, we generate the other two and a half million from from that leasing operations. Uh, we have about 50 clients in the park. Uh, Various sizes. Some of the big companies here, uh, Cyanotech is here. Uh, they are the ones that grow Bioastin. Um, they're probably the largest. They're probably our anchor tenant. We have the water bottling companies that desalinate the, the uh, deep sea water and uh, and bottle that for sale, both in the United States and overseas. A uh, lot of aquaculture companies. Uh, that we have, and then we have several um, renewable energy uh, projects here, and that's really uh, an overview of what we do, but I wanted to just kind of give the viewers a flavor of what we do and before we kind of jump into some of uh, the renewable energy projects that we're working on. And uh, for that, I kind of wanted to turn it over to Laurent. She could talk about one of our key initiatives right now is um, is our microgrid initiative. And uh, let me turn it over to Laurent. Hi, Laurent. Aloha. Hi. And aloha, viewers. Uh, so if we could go to the next slide, um, which is an overview of our park. And I um, want to talk a little bit about um, our facility and the fact that we're in a desertic area and uh, it's a really high insulation. In fact, we have about a day um, less of insulation over a year time frame than Phoenix, Arizona. Could you, could so you, we're really uh, excuse me, could, could you say what insulation means? Because to me it means, or many people would think it's just insulating your house rather than sunlight. Uh, so, so you mean like the definition of insulation? Yeah, yeah. Basically, it's the sun, sunlight hitting, you know, hitting the yeah. surface area um, down here at, at Nelha. We have one of those perfect bell-shaped curves 
um, although we do get a few clouds at the end of the day, but really it's a bell-shaped curve, which is maximizes the amount of sun that you can collect on a given area. Okay. We also have very low rainfall here as well. And so we're a perfect place for solar. And in fact, we have, uh, if you look on the map, is a collection of, um, air, of uh, facilities that have a cumulative uh, of three megawatts worth of storage in the park, although it's about 200 kilowatts of that is actually Nelha PV um, installation. We're currently installing right now 170 kilowatts in our research campus. Um, but we have also in this area, we have two circuit lines that are coming out of the substation, which is right at the um, highway, um, at the, the Queen Kahumanu Highway. And a variety of users that range from industrial um, uses, industrial loads to office, more office type of loads. And so we're also perfect, not just for solar demonstrations, um, but also perfect for microgrid demonstrations. And so we have three efforts um, that we are currently um, looking at right now. One of them, the first one I'll talk about, is a cooperative effort um, with the Korea Institute of Energy Technology um, Evaluation and Planning, or KETEP. And um, the idea there is to mutually benefit um, from uh, cooperation and coordination um, so that we can pool resources and develop a microgrid in the research campus and what we call the farm compound um, down here at the end of the road at Melha. Um, so this involves leading institutions in South Korea, um, companies like LG, Encore, Seoul National um, University, and Hawaii's own HNEI and, and Melha. Uh, the, uh, the Korea has the IHNEI board, <laughs> which is um, currently associated with. Um, so the um, KETEP um, organization has awarded $2 million towards this project, and um, it's in our minds right now because they were just visiting yesterday and today and um, advancing on the design. So we're in, we're in a design phase at this point. And the plan is to have about an additional 700 kilowatt of PV as well as a 250 kilowatt, 500 kilowatt hour um, energy storage system here. And on the research side of things, um, the idea is to develop and field test um, an, an AI algorithm to run this uh, microgrid. And, and this is somewhat unique, and we hope to be one of the first um, where um, such an algorithm will be tested. That's one of our one of our efforts. Um, another effort is to develop a long long range plan. Um, again, we hope to continue working with HNEI um, to make plan and make sure plan and make sure that all of our separate efforts in energy initiatives come together to a cohesive plan for the future. And thirdly, um, in order to do that, we're also seeking funds um, from the DOE Department of Energy um, to build and expand upon the Korean project. Uh, microgrid and expand to a larger microgrid to benefit um, all of our pump stations. So the Korean project um, is uh, will be benefiting the one of our pump stations, one of our main pump stations down here at the research campus. Uh, the broader microgrid will benefit um, the other pump stations as well. So uh, before you go to the uh, your next slide, which I think you're getting ready to do, we're going to cut for a short break, and we'll be back in about one minute. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Living in this crazy world, so caught up in the confusion, nothing is making sense for me and you. Maybe we can find a way, there's got to be solutions. To make a brighter day What do we do? We've got to give a little love Have a little hope Make this world a little better Make it a better world Try a little more Hard than before Hey, Stan the Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii and they won't let me do political commentary, so I'm stuck doing energy stuff, but I really like energy stuff, so I'm gonna keep on doing it. So join me every Friday on Stan the Energy Man at lunchtime, at noon, on my lunch hour, 
We're going to talk about everything energy, especially if it begins with the word hydrogen. We're going to definitely be talking about it. We'll talk about how we can make Hawaii cleaner, how we can make the world a better place, just basically save the planet. Even Miss America can't even talk about stuff like that anymore. We got it nailed down here. So we'll see you on Friday at noon with Stan the Energy Man. So we're back with uh, Greg Barber and Laurence Sombardier from Nelha over on the Big Island through the magic of Zoom and our newest uh, you know, communications technology. So great, uh, it was a great flight over there. It took me 30 seconds. So you're on, Laurence. All right, we'll just add a little bit to the, the description on, on our microgrid initiative. And um, to do that, I'm just gonna go to this next slide, which is an overview of our research campus where the first phase of our microgridding um, will be happening. And just describe really briefly the assets that we have there. We have a one uh, megawatt backup diesel genset uh, as well as an energy storage test bed, which includes 36 kilowatt PV, and which we have been using in conjunction and working with Sandia National Laboratories um, to demonstrate various energy storage systems. So we've had a couple of projects there. Um, the most recent one is an occult um, project, uh, which is a lead acid battery that we're demonstrating there for a year. Um, but other assets in the facility which can contribute and, and to a microgrid are, well, of course, the hydrogen station, which um, Mitch will be talking about a little bit later. And that can serve as um, uh, a system which can basically take up excess power when needed in the middle of the day. And, of course, there's the OTEC Tower demonstration facility is also in here. This is an R&D facility, so not really something that runs 24-7, um, but it is another um, asset and different type of generation that can be included on our microgrid. So I don't want to take too much time on the microgrid, so I think we'll hand this back to uh, Greg um, to talk about a few other projects that we have here. Hey, thanks, Laurence. Yeah, thank you, Laurence. Um, I wanted to talk, the next slide was a, a picture of uh, the, uh, uh, our solar desalination project. And uh, this is a project that some people may uh, see and uh, be familiar with. It was originally developed by Sopuji as a, uh, a concentrated solar power project, the CSP project. It's about four acres of mirrors uh, that are on a sing single axis tracker. And uh, Sopaji uh, uh, went uh, out of business about three or four years ago. And so we've been looking for uh, a way to uh, use that equipment uh, for renewable energy demonstration. And so we were fortunate enough to uh, write a grant application to the U.S. Department of Energy using those mirrors uh, for a solar desalination project. And uh, one of our key staff here, Dr. Alex Leonard, uh, was in charge of that project and uh, he did exceptionally well. Uh, he partnered with a company uh, in California, in Petaluma, called Trevi Systems and it's uh, demonstrating their technology using forward osmosis and, uh, and to see if we can uh, produce uh, large amounts of desalinated water from, from those mirrors. The concept is that uh, using forward osmosis, uh, if you heat the water up to a high enough temperature, then uh, the special membranes that uh, Trevi uses and it's developed, uh, it, you need much less energy to push that water, the salt water, through the membrane. And so the amount of energy needed to desalinate water goes down dramatically. The benefits of that are, number one, the lower cost, of course, um, but you can also 
uh, use this desalination technique in areas that are not connected to the grid where there's a high amount of uh, power generation. So you can use it in much more remote locations because you need much, much less power. Uh, our project is uh, getting started. We have a preliminary approval from the Department of Energy, and we hope to get started in the next uh, several months. And uh, we hope the goal of this project is to produce 132,000 gallons of desalinated water a day. That's quite a bit That's of water. That's a lot of water. Uh, and uh, and uh, we we're pretty excited about it. Uh, because in Kona, as uh, a lot of people know, um, you know, there's uh, it's a dry area uh, compared to Oahu and in, in the in the windward side of this island, the Hilo side. So the need for um, fresh water is is pretty high, believe it or not. And so we hope that this technology will have a lot of benefit. We are going to demonstrate it here in the park. Uh, we are going to use the desalinated water. Uh, to supplant uh, fresh water that's currently used for aquaculture purposes. And, uh, and uh, there's a lot of other areas where agriculture uses fresh water that this, this technology could be very beneficial. And so I think it has a lot of potential for the future. So I'd just like to point out while we're changing slides, this is a great example of the type of uh, projects you're doing and that D, uh, DBED is sponsoring. Uh, to help uh, all of Hawaii, it's particularly uh, companies like you have at, the, uh, at, at Nelha that rely on fresh water for some of their operations. So that's a really good thing. Right. So we should be proud right. of that. Right. So well done. I have the next slide there. That's a, it's a picture of uh, Makai Ocean Engineering's um, OTEC testing tower. And uh, you can see there... Uh, this is a demonstration uh, tower, like Laurent said. Uh, it, it was uh, built to test the technologies needed for ocean thermal energy, energy conversion. Uh, it, it can produce power, but it's not built to produce power. It's built really to test heat exchangers, and you can see on the slide there, uh, on the left-hand side, uh, the two large white pipes uh, in between those two pipes in the middle is a heat exchanger. Those are built from titanium. They're very expensive because there's seawater in them and ammonia in them. They have to be built from titanium so they don't corrode. And uh, so their goal is to try to reduce the cost of that heat exchanger. I think they've had a lot of success over the last couple of years. And uh, I think... Uh, I think they're they're doing a fantastic job, especially for a local company, and um, I think uh, they have a, a huge potential to uh, make some uh, game-changing uh, advancement in heat exchanger heat exchanger technology, which will really really change the economics of ocean uh, thermal energy conversion or OTEC project. So my understanding, Greg, is they actually uh, manufacture those heat exchangers on site using machine vision systems and, I mean, really high-tech laser welding. It's really, really fantastic. I used to run a company that uh, specialized in laser vision systems. It's a fascinating technology. And for any young guys out there looking for an interesting uh, career, you might want to look at laser vision systems. It's all robotics. It's like total state-of-the-art. Oh. It is. It is. It is. Uh, and you know they are. They're doing some amazing things, and uh, it's made possible. They just uh, received funding from the High Technology Development Corporation, right. and uh, they were able to add some new uh, laser guided equipment for uh, for the manufacture of these uh, heat exchangers out of titanium and. Uh, I think they're making some huge advancements in terms of cost savings. So right. we should hopefully see those, uh, uh, you know, come into the private sector uh, for commercialization uh, in a few years, if not if not earlier. Um, but the thing with uh, we have the pipes available to produce uh, 
large amounts of power from ocean thermal energy conversion. And so we have a request out uh, for proposals uh, for uh, a, a next size demonstration project where we would actually purchase the power uh, between 100 and 300 uh, kW kilowatts. Uh, and that, you know, the, like the advantage of base of OTEC is that it's base load, it's not intermittent. And uh, that's really important for us. So we're a large energy user, as Lon said. Uh, we pump a lot of seawater, it uses a lot of power. And uh, we have a load, uh, I think around 700 to uh, one megawatt, uh, which is fairly consistent uh, around the clock. And so also, uh, I'd like so, to put a plug in for hydrogen. It's perfect for hydrogen, so to have base load power running the, those electrolyzers. I love that part. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, the, my point is that if we do get this next project, uh, a demonstration project, we'll have a large amount of seawater available. And, uh, right. you know, we're looking at uh, a seawater um, uh, cooling district, uh, much like is being proposed for downtown Honolulu. And I'll turn it over to Laurence for that last slide uh, before we wrap up. Okay, Laurence, go. You've got three minutes. We're running out of time. Three yeah, minutes. Yeah, we're running out of time. I will make this short. Um, I think most of your viewers are familiar with the um, Hawaii goal of 100% uh, um, clean energy by 2045. Uh, what most folks um, tend to sometimes forget is that a significant amount of that is actually going to be due uh, or attained through um, efficiency um, progress. And this next project, um, which would be a regional seawater air conditioning district um, for Kona, um, falls under that category. Uh, NELHA currently has um, at least as much capacity, if not exceeding the capacity of what is currently being designed for the Honolulu seawater air conditioning. So this project is really going to be determining the conditions um, under which a seawater um, district, cooling district, might make sense here um, to benefit, uh, well, currently most of the companies here have seawater air conditioning and some, most of them report that it's a tenfold um, improvement on their costs. Um, so the idea is to see if we can benefit other areas and, and the community at large with um, such a district. So this is um, something that we're going to be hiring a firm for, and we're currently in the process of selecting that, that firm at this moment. So I can't really disclose who that's going to be at the moment. But I think I will stop there, yeah. and um, Greg might have a few uh, additional remarks. Right. Mitch, said, uh, thank you, Laurence. Uh, you know, Mitch, that's kind of a quick summary, a uh, uh, walkthrough of the projects that we're working on here uh, to give uh, your viewers uh, uh, an idea of uh, some of the work that we're doing and, and some of the business our clients are doing here. It's pretty exciting. Uh, did you want to finish by, uh, you know, one of our key projects is that um, uh, HNEI, uh, Mitch, is doing a hydrogen uh, production storage project. Probably, do we have a couple of a minute there? Yeah, we have a minute. Wrap we, up can, and we can talk about that, Mitch. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That would be the last slide I think we have. Right. There we go. <clears throat> so I can talk to that slide a little bit if you want, Greg, uh, since it's my project. Yeah. So, uh, you know, what, what this is is a massive uh, a concrete slab upon which we have arrayed a, a variety of equipment, like steering you. And, and the objective of this is to produce hydrogen which we will be using to fuel a Helion uh, County of Hawaii bus. And you can see the rendering of the bus, which is actually on Oahu right now, just uh, completing its commissioning. Uh, the station itself uh, houses in that 40-foot shipping container, you see it houses an electrolyzer and a compressor. And then at the top of the picture, you'll see two tube trailers. That's where we store the hydrogen. We supply uh, hydrogen from one of the trailers to the uh, dispenser. You see at the back left-hand side of the bus, the little blue thing. It looks like a regular gas station dispenser. And then uh, the uh, trailers also give us flexibility to deliver hydrogen to other places uh, on the Big Island to run other um, uh, projects, uh, pilot projects, uh, to demonstrate the technology. I think I'm going to leave it at that. Um, we're uh, still uh, finishing commissioning of the system, but it gives us another chance to come back later and uh, show yeah. some actual equipment. So 
So I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you and Laurence very much for appearing on the show today. It was great. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I told you the time would go by quickly, as it always does, because you have good things to thank say. You. Thank you, Mitch. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you, Mitch. Okay. I'll see you uh, next week. Aloha. Okay. Aloha. Aloha.